Welcome to Yoga for Cancer. I'm Rebecca, and I'm happy to see everyone today. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about, um, or we'll, we'll be working with, thoracic spine mobility and looking at precautions for osteoporosis. As we know, um, chemotherapy can sometimes induce osteoporosis. And so we have to be especially careful with uh, particularly the uh, thoracic spine and the cervical spine and work to not, uh, with the thoracic spine especially, not come into forward bends that are rounded. So you know in class that anytime we take a forward fold, we're very careful to have a long spine. That's why we have blocks to be able to, you know, press through the hands and really lengthen from tailbone to crown. And so we will uh, be reminded of that as we go through class. And, um, and we'll look at a couple of modifications for certain poses. So let's start out seated. Take a moment to get comfortable for some breath work. Allow yourself to settle, dropping in to the support beneath you. Maybe you have a bolster or a blanket underneath you. And <clears throat> I should have said this before I started settling everyone. I said it uh, to the, the early birds, but we will be using blocks today. So any something that can work for you as blocks. Uh, and it would be good to have an extra cushion or bolster. We may need that as well. So if you need a moment to run and do that and grab those things, uh, go right ahead. But otherwise, we'll start to settle. Really feeling your points of connection with the earth. Beginning to notice your sensory environment. Feeling what's underneath your feet or legs, what you're sitting on, noticing the space around you, the temperature of the air as you inhale and exhale, noticing the light, and any sounds that you hear close by, or further away. If you'd like to close your eyes or take a soft gaze, bring your hands to your knees or thighs and turn palms up. We're going to work with a flower blossom breath or rose breath. As we inhale, we'll spread the fingers wide apart, opening through the palm. As we exhale, draw all the fingertips in towards center, making your flower bud. Inhale and open, flower blooms. And exhale and close, drawing fingertips together. Continue with your own breath, working to open through the hands and fingers. Squeezing in towards center, pressing out in all directions. Let's take 10 more breaths. And after your 10th or so breath, take your hands and really shake them out. Let it all go. Let's move into our sun breaths, inhaling, palms facing up. And exhale, turn palms down, lower the arms. We'll do a few more like this. Inhaling up, 
and exhale back. You guys keep going. I'm just going to slide this chair back a bit. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up and release arms down. Let's bring arms out at shoulder height. Turn so that palms are facing up and then bend the elbows so palms are facing each other. Inhale and open through the chest here. Exhale and bring the left arm towards the right. Inhale to open and exhale right to left. Inhale to open and exhale, bring both arms together towards the center. Inhale to open. This time right to left. Inhale open and left to right and open and both together, open and whew, release, let the arms go. We'll inhale once again, shoulder height, finding, we call these cactus arms, these are cactus claps, but we're going to move into our cactus teapot. Not sure what that is. Lower your right hand to your hip and exhale and tip over. Inhale back through center, switch, and exhale over. And take a few more repetitions, moving with your breath speed. You could even stay for a breath if you feel supported, opening up the side body. And this or the next time that arms come down, relax and rest your arms down. Let's bend elbows and bring fingertips to your shoulders. We'll begin to draw big circles with our elbows. And I'm moving fast. I'm going to slow it down for myself a little bit. I've been having some discomfort in my upper back. So let's reverse direction. So I'm going to be moving very smoothly and carefully noticing what I feel as I move through these motions. Let's go forward one at a time in infinity circles. And again, the temptation to move fast and then slow it down. Find a place to reverse. And come to stillness, release arms down. I'm going to come to tabletop just for a brief series. Uh, do grab your blocks because we will need them for our lunge work. Make sure that you have something underneath your knees. I use these bits of mat. And I have my blocks handy. In a moment, we'll use them. Okay. So come to your tabletop, knees about hip distance apart. Maybe you're on your hands, maybe you're on fists with thumbs pointing forward, or maybe all the way down on forearms. You can be on blocks on your forearms. And let's take a moment. We're not going to go right into our cat-cow. Let's take a moment and feel a long spine in this position. I'm going to turn around. Sorry. I can't see myself on that side for some reason. Okay. There, I know where I am now. <laughs> okay. So as you inhale, feel yourself lengthen from crown to tailbone. As you exhale, don't move your spine, but draw your belly in to support the spine. Inhale and reach long, opposite directions. And exhale, draw the belly in and up. So if you know that you have osteoporosis or you know that there's a risk that you have osteoporosis, which is many of us and certainly anyone of a certain age, we would really like to avoid getting into a big uh, curve in the upper spine and the thoracic spine. 
So as we go through cat and cow, the cow pose, which is the arching of the back, very good, nice and open. As we come into cat pose, instead of really pushing the floor away and getting into a big uh, C curve with your back, think more about drawing the belly in and up, tucking the tailbone, and keeping the upper back kind of smooth. So the action is happening more in the pelvis. Inhale into cow pose. You can look up a little bit if that feels good. Exhale, look down, tuck your tail, draw the belly in, but don't push the floor away too hard and don't drop the head all the way. Okay, two or three more just to feel this. And beautiful. Grab your blocks. We're going to work with some knee down lunge movements. Have some space around you. I'm doing this on the diagonal because I think it's sometimes that helps with uh, seeing what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to step my, let's see, I'll step my right foot forward first. Just inside my blocks. The blocks are wide. And I'm going to begin to rock forward and back. This allows me to warm up the joints, open up the front of the hip. And as I come forward, I want to make sure that my knee is not coming so far forward that my heel is lifted. So keep your heel down. If your heel is lifting, then scoot your foot a little further forward so that when you press forward, the knee is over the ankle. And this or the next time that you come forward, stay here. Maybe bring one hand to the knee, maybe one arm reaches up maybe both arms. Inhale and reach up. Maybe you look up. Exhale, find those goddess or cactus arms. Inhale here, opening the chest. And exhale, release hands to blocks. Let's curl our back toes under. Scoot this way. And press back, coming into a lunge. So my knee is over my ankle. I'm on the ball of my back foot, pressing out through the heel, and I'm reaching through the crown of the head to find that long spine. I keep, I'm turning my head to look at you, but you should be looking down towards the floor and reaching through the crown of the head. We're going to take a step up with the back foot, bringing it next to the front foot, and here is most important that we find that long spine. So hands can be on your blocks or on your knees if you need to be up higher, but find that long spine. And then press into your feet and inhale, come all the way up and exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. Let me move back so you can see me a little better. So from here, let's inhale and reach up. Exhale, we're going to come forward with a long spine. At a certain point, your knees will want to bend so that you can maintain that long spine. Hands come to your blocks. Reach back with the right leg. Press back into your lunge. I'm gonna scoot my front foot forward a little bit. And then slowly lower the back knee and come back to your starting position. And we'll work through that on the other side. So step the left foot forward and begin to rock. I'm just trying to warm up a little bit, create some length, some space. And this or the next time that you come forward, rise up one or both arms. Big inhale here, reach through the fingertips. Exhale. Draw the elbows down and bring the shoulder blades together behind the heart. Stay for an inhale and exhale. Hands come to blocks. Curl back, toes under, and find that lunge position. Try to balance your hips so that you're not opening one in one direction or the other. 
One more breath, long spine, and then take a step up. Remember to bend your knees so that you can have that long spine. I have my fingertips at my blocks or I can have my hands on my knees. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's pause here for a breath. And then we'll continue on. Inhale up. Exhale, that forward fold, long spine, knees bent. Step back with the left foot. Find your lunge position. Lower the knee and come back to your starting position. So we're going to go through that another time. And in our second go round, I'll give you the option of coming up in a crescent lunge or bringing your knee down and coming up in the knee down lunge as we did in the last set. So you'll have an option here. So stepping the right foot forward, press a little bit forward and back, find your positioning, knee over ankle, curl back toes under and find your lunge. Now you can lower the knee again to come up or if you feel steady here, bringing hand to knee and then one or both arms. Now in this crescent lunge or warrior one position, my knee is over my ankle, my back foot, I'm on the ball of the foot, I'm pressing out through my heel. My leg is not necessarily fully straight, but working in that direction. My heart is open, looking up, reaching through my arms, one more breath, and then exhale, hands to blocks. If your knee is down, come back up into the lunge, and then step forward, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up, and exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment here to find your breath and to notice if you feel any difference between one side of the body and the other. We'll continue inhaling up. Exhale, forward fold, long spine, hands to blocks. Now we're stepping back, I think with our right leg. Yeah, I think that's correct. Lowering the knee and drawing the other leg back. Moving to the other side, stepping the left foot forward. Press forward, knee is over the ankle. Curl back toes and find your lunge position. Get nice and stable. Make sure your legs, your feet are in railroad track relationship rather than balance beam. So there's still separation between. And then bring one hand to your knee and begin to reach up with the other, maybe both. And here I am pressing my right hip forward and drawing my left hip back. So my hips are pointing straight ahead. Big inhale here, press out through your heel. Maybe your knee is still down and that's fine. Exhale, release hands to blocks. Lower the back knee if it's up and draw the knee back. Stepping right foot forward, curl back toes under, press back in to the lunge, knee down or up, coming up once more, stay for a breath, and exhale, hands down, drop the back knee, and bring the other knee back. Let's just sit back for a moment. <sighs> Enjoying the uh, little bit of energy of this practice. We're going to make our way up to standing next. You can go through the same step up sequence that we just went through or just find your other way, your own way to get up. I'm going to come through a lunge, step forward, and inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Make your way to the center of your mat, getting ready for our standing practice. 
find your way into your Tadasana. Feet are about hip distance apart. Begin to settle into your feet, maybe rock a little bit forward and back. Finding the sensation of balance between the feet and within each foot so that you're not gripping your toes and leaning forward or sitting way back in your heels. Standing up nice and tall. Let's inhale and raise arms up. Interlace your fingers and bring your cupped hands to the back of your head. Inhale here, press your head very gently into your hands. Maybe your elbows open. Maybe you can feel your shoulder blades coming together at the back of the heart. Inhale here, exhale, begin to draw your chin towards your chest. Let your elbows come forward, but do not pull on your head. Just allow a gentle suggestion of stretching the back of the neck. We'll inhale and open. And exhale, stretch the back of the neck two more times. Inhale, really squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Exhale forward. Inhale, imagine that you're creating a little shelf with your shoulder blades for the heart to sit on. And exhale forward and release arms down, shake it out. So we're, we're going to work with warrior three as our balance pose today. And we can do this in a number of ways, but I'd like to work with the wall. The only problem is that I don't have a side wall to show you from the side. So I'm going to, pos I'll do some demonstrating with blocks and some demonstrating to the wall, but you'll see my feet and my, the back of me. So hopefully that will give you some, uh, some information. Okay. So for warrior three, I'll show you with the blocks first and then I'll show you with the wall. So I'm going to have my blocks up tall. I'm going to be standing behind them, finding my Tadasana. Inhale and reach up and exhale, forward fold. Hinging at the hips at a certain point, the knees bend so that the back can stay long. And then bring your hands to your blocks. So I have some weight in my hands, I have weight in my feet, my spine is long. I'm going to release my left leg and extend it behind me. Maybe I will stay right here working to level my hips. We don't want to open the hips. We want to keep them nice and level so that my toes and knee are pointing down towards the ground. Stay here or try adding an opposite arm reach reaching out from one arm to the other leg. One more breath here. Lower your hand and your foot. Maybe bring hands to knees and slowly come all the way up. Beautiful. So that's how you do it with blocks. If you're working with the wall, it's similar. You're just going to be, your pressure is going to be out instead of down. So it changes the pose a little bit. So if I'm working here, why don't we just get crazy and I'll move this over. Don't get dizzy if you're watching me. Okay, I'm just going to move this over so you can get a different vantage point. Let's see if that works. Okay, why not? Okay, so you can see the messy edge of my desk now. So I'm going to stand this way facing the wall and getting the distance is the hardest part because you want to be able to be in this relationship. So long spine, hips bent. So take a moment to try and figure out your distance and then find 
your Tadasana. Inhale and reach up. Exhale, begin to come forward, bringing hands to the wall. My knees are bent. My spine is long. I have pressure into the wall. I need to step back just a little bit. And then I'm going to release, I think my other leg, my left leg, and press back. So I can adjust my hands a little wider, a little narrower. I'm working to get this hip to drop so that my knees and toes are pointing straight ahead. I'll take one more breath here and then release the foot down and maybe I walk up the wall. So if you've tried it one way, try it the other way. If you don't have a wall handy, then you can use your blocks. and see which works better for you. So go ahead and go through the Warrior Three practice once more. I'm gonna see if I can see you. So you'll come forward, hands will come either to blocks or to the wall, or even using a chair that's not gonna move. Make sure your spine is nice and long, and then begin to reach back with your right leg, if that's the one you're working with. Beautiful. So reaching back, maybe you add the opposite arm reach if you're on blocks. Now we don't wanna be opening up towards the ceiling. We wanna be reaching straight forward. Yes, much better. Beautiful. Yeah, it's harder. Uh, make sure you're using opposite. Yeah, I think you are, Ruth. Okay. I can see a few of you. Beautiful job. Take your time and come back to your starting position. Make sure you take your breaths and then move to the other side. Make sure that you have a long spine. Let your knees bend as much as they need to as you come into your forward fold, hinging at the hips. Reach back with the other leg. Maybe your hands are coming to the wall and it's just a different orientation because you're reaching out instead of down. The wall is uh, challenging in a different sort of way. Take your time, bring your leg down and come back into your standing posture. Beautiful, beautiful job. Just trying to be able to see <laughs> what you guys are doing. It's not the easiest with this setup with Zoom, but you know, we do the best we can. Okay, we're going to make our way back down so we can stretch out all of that work we've just done. Inhale up. Exhale, come forward, bend your knees, fingertips to block the floor, and come on down. Coming through table, we're going to go right into a child's pose, but I'd like you to use a bolster or cushion underneath your elbows as you come into your child's pose. And the idea here is to create that long spine. So we don't wanna be rounding into a ball. We wanna still have a little bit of length in the spine, even as we come into this position. Maybe you can take a block or another cushion and allow your head to rest. I'm coming into a child's pose that serves you today, giving you enough support for your spine and allowing you to soften and relax into the stretch. Focusing on your breath. Big inhales into the back body, especially across the low back where we did some work here with our forward folds. Make sure you can feel that sense of 
blowing up a balloon inside the body to stretch and support the low back. Long exhales to release and let go. Two more breaths. And when you're ready, carefully walk fingertips back and roll onto your back. Coming down onto the floor on your back. Knees can be bent. First thing we're going to do is walk our feet out hip, uh, I mean, past hip width to mat width, and let your knees drop in towards center. Coming into constructive rest pose. Another release for the low back. Allows the hip flexors to turn off. Allow the body to be heavy. Feel the heaviness of the back of the head, the back of the shoulders, the hips, your feet. Allowing what's beneath you to fully support you. Some long breaths to release. Carefully walk your feet in hip distance. Knees can stay bent. Bring your arms down at your sides, palms down. We're going to work with some arm and leg movement. We're going to start just with the arms. So we'll inhale, raise the left arm, turn the head to the right. Exhale, release the arm down, turn the head to center. Inhale, raise the right arm, turn the head to the left. Exhale, lower the arm, head comes to center. Then inhale, raise both arms. And exhale, both arms down. Work with that sequence a few times. Moving with your breath speed, try different ways of turning the head, if that feels good. <clears throat> Take your time, really paying attention to the movement of your shoulder blades on your back as the arm is raising and lowering. For some of us, the arm will probably come out a little wider rather than way overhead. So work with the range of motion that feels good in your body. You can even work with goddess or cactus arms. Working to both sides and end with both arms coming up and exhale both arms down. And when you're ready to move on, we're going to add the leg. So we'll raise the left arm and try extending the left leg, pressing out through the heel. The leg can slide out, it doesn't have to be lifted. Get long on the left side. And then as you exhale, slowly slide the leg back in. Your foot comes back to the starting position and you lower your arm. And we'll go to the other side. Working on the left, on the right side. So raise the arm, extend the leg, get long. Exhale, draw the knee back up so that the foot can come onto the ground and the arm comes down beside you. So take a few passes on each side. And then when you're ready, give a try to opposite arm and leg. Take it slow. And 
and move through the practice. Take your time. And at any point, if you begin to feel like you're ready to be done with this sequence, just draw your knees in towards your chest and rock a little bit from side to side. Make sure that you've worked to both sides and feel somewhat balanced. And now, of course, you're down on the ground, and I should have told you to get your bolster or a pillow nearby. So hopefully you can reach it easily. And I'd like you to place the bolster out on, the, on your left side, down at the level of your knees and hips. So your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor, and you're bringing your bolster to the side of your left, to the left side of your knees. With your feet and knees about hip distance apart, we're going to inhale arms out at shoulder height. Now we should, you should be lying down. I'm sitting up to instruct, but you should be lying down unless you don't want to be. You'll have your bolster at your side. Yes. Arms are out at shoulder height. Inhale here and then exhale and drop your knees to the left, allowing them to lean against the bolster. What we're working on here is keeping an opening across the heart, allowing the right shoulder to stay firmly planted when you drop your knees in the opposite direction. So use your bolster accordingly to give you support. The shoulder stays down. The knees only go as far as they can go with the shoulder staying down so that we're getting a nice opening here. When you come into your twist, stay for a few breaths. With each exhale, can the shoulders get heavier, arms heavier? With each inhale, can you feel a, even a sense of lengthening through the spine? We'll take two more breaths on this side and then switch to the other side. When you're ready to switch, bring your knees up through center and gently move your cushion or bolster blanket, whatever you're using, to the other side. Resettle, make sure both hips are planted, shoulders planted, arms come out at shoulder height. And slowly drop your knees to the right, keeping that left shoulder pinned down as much as you can so that the, the planting of the shoulders is sort of the seat of the pose and then the legs are moving away from that, giving you the twist. So using bolsters or cushions to prop up so that you can get that opening all the way across heart center from shoulder to shoulder. Stay with your twist for several breaths till you're ready to come back to center, hugging knees in. Bringing both feet to the floor, see if it would be comfortable to extend your legs out. We're going to work with a 
supine tree pose. So lying on your back, your arms can be down at your sides, palms down. And see if it's okay to extend your legs. We're not gonna keep them that way for too long. And we'll work with the left side first. I'd like you to draw your left leg in into that position that we use for tree pose. So your hip is opening, your knee is dropping to the side, and the sole of your foot is coming in towards your inner thigh or maybe down at your calf. It could even be at your knee this time because you're not creating pressure. So one hip is opening, the other leg is extended straight. Find your leg position. And then maybe you'd like to slide your arms up along the floor into branches. Work to keep your belly engaged so you don't come into a big arch in your low back. Keep the belly engaged. And if the arms are raised, slowly release them. And inhale the knee up and extend the leg out in front of you. And we'll switch sides. So extending out through the right leg, the left leg, sorry, we'll go to the other side. <laughs> so you can draw the knee up so the sole of the foot is on the floor and then let the hip open. That's a, maybe a different way to approach it. So the sole of the foot is at the inner thigh or somewhere along the inside of the extended leg. The knee is dropping open to get a nice opening in the inner thighs. Maybe you raise your arms slowly overhead, like making snow angels to create your branches, keeping the belly engaged. And when you're ready, slowly release arms down and draw your knees in, hug them in. We're going to work with a half happy baby pose today. So have your feet on the floor, knees bent, and begin to hug your left knee in towards your left shoulder. So you can stay here or see if you can bring your left arm inside your knee and reach and grab the outside of your foot and draw the foot up so that the sole of the foot is pointing towards the ceiling. Keeping that right foot grounded, keeping both hips grounded and lifting up on one side. Breathe into the stretch. If it would feel good to draw the leg out to the side, you can do that, or pressing up towards the ceiling, depending on your flexibility and how your body is today. And when you're ready, slowly release the left leg down and move to the other side. Drawing that knee in, to the shoulder first, maybe you stay there. The other foot is grounded. Maybe you can reach inside the knee to grasp the outside of the foot. Use your other hand to help you, but don't do anything that feels uncomfortable in your body. Stay in a comfortable range of motion, please. Pressing the foot up towards, sealing the knee, bending back towards your shoulder. Maybe the leg likes to open to the side or press up towards the ceiling or just stay with the knee drawn in. And if you'd like to move into full happy baby, Grasping the outsides of your feet and drawing knees towards your shoulders, feet up towards the ceiling. Try rocking from side to side. Maybe extend one leg 
and rock away from it. And extend the other leg and rock away from it. Beautiful. And when you're ready, slowly lower one foot and then the other. And our final pose today is going to be a supported bridge pose. So for the supported bridge pose, you will want to have either a soft block or a folded blanket or a very small and soft cushion. Have that at the ready at your side and come into a supine with your knees bent, feet on the floor, knees and feet about hip distance apart. We're going to press in to your feet and lift your hips just enough so that you can slide your block or blanket or bolster underneath your sacrum. So make sure it's not in the, the soft part of your back, but right underneath that triangular bone at the base of your pelvis. If it's uncomfortable, it's probably not in the right spot. Try adjusting it or take it out entirely. If you can find comfort in this position, then stay, allowing the hips to be heavy. Arms can be down at your sides, or you can raise them overhead, maybe grasping opposite elbows. Stay here, or if you'd like, try lifting your feet up towards the ceiling. So your hips stay on the bolster or the block and your feet reach up towards the ceiling. This is a supported shoulder stand, much safer than the other kind. But please take it easy and slowly since I can't see you uh, and give uh, modifications or instructions. So please move at your own pace. Enjoy the sensations. And if it's not enjoyable, please come out. Stay with this supported bridge with either uh, with feet up or down until you're ready to come into your position for Shavasana. Maybe you'd like your bolster to slide under your knees. And to do that, you'll bring your feet down if they're up. Press into your feet to lift your hips just enough to slide out whatever you've placed underneath. Maybe you slide it down so it supports your knees. Maybe you'd like to lie on your side. Maybe you'd like to put your legs up the wall. We're all in different spaces, so we can have different ways of relaxing. So find your comfortable position. With each exhale, soften and sink into the support of the earth beneath you. Imagining the sky above you as a blanket holding you safe as you let go.
dreams allow us to enter into the timeless world of symbolism. Our dreams take us on a visually encoded symbolic journey through our unconscious, our emotions, and our spiritual life. Each image in a dream is rich with meaning. Each image combines memory and imagination and enacts a drama of relationships between patterns, allowing a new order to emerge if we can allow ourselves to open to it. Dreams are the unconscious cataloging of patterns, images, and emotions. Working with our dreams helps to develop the third eye and to encounter our rich world of inner symbolism. Once we can stay still in that center, the patterns start to become clear. We can use meditation as a tool to penetrate our dreams, as well as a tool for centering the mind and viewing with less attachment the constant run of images that flow through our consciousness at every moment. Begin to deepen your breath bringing small movements, movements into fingers and toes. When you feel ready, roll to one side and pause. And then press into your fingertips and slowly make your way up to sitting, allowing your attention to stay deeply inward for another moment or two. We'll seal our practice with three chance of OM. And if you'd like to join, bring hands at heart center and inhale. Oh. Oh. Shanti, peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice with me and with each other.